When I was 13 years old, I had a 24 year plan to become financially free and to become a Wacom millionaire. Because I'm so sick and tired to watch my own parents fought over one thing over and over and over again. And that is money, you've had guessed it. Sometimes they get it so emotional, they get into physical fights. One will literally hold up a kitchen knife and the next person, he will hold up a fry pan and they'll be going right at each other. They make so much noises that the cops will come over to make sure my mother was not murdering my father. And when the cop will ride on my door, I was so embarrassed. I wish there was a big hole in the center of this floor and I just want to jump into it and never get out. I literally would just hide, just want to hide in that darkest of corner and I didn't want anyone to know how much this abusive family is. In fact, I remember my mom working so much, so frustrated with money and if I say it and do anything just a little bit out of norm, you will feel that cold and hard bamboo stick and on my ass. And that shit hurts. That really, ouch, that thing hurts. And I don't want to share any of this with any of my so-called the uh, middle school friends that I had. And I don't want my teacher to know. I was so embarrassed that I'm living to such abusive a family, I had no way to hide. And when I go to school, all the little middle, middle school kids made fun of me because of my different skin colors, because I look different, because when I open my mouth trying to pronounce any English word, it just came out totally wrong with weird sounding of accents, all that stuff. And kids surely took advantage of that. In fact, the two most important English phrase I ever learned to out of middle school was me no English and me love you long time, right? And I remember I was so dirt poor when I grow up, I couldn't even have a regular clothes with shoes. In fact, shoes often are just one size shorter. So I literally had to walk around with my toes crawling up like this. And you learn to walking like a female walking high heels like this. And, and you, you just literally walk around and you got to walk in small steps because if you don't, you're going to fall and that shit hurts. And you know what? The one thing good thing come out of it is I know how to shake my booty when I walk. Or the shoes could be one inch taller or one inch longer. So it, it's always feel loose. You literally have to walk in like transformers. Like walking like this and you're just hoping your shoes, if you just raise your feet, a little bit higher, a little bit stronger, your shoes will literally flew across the hallway, might hit somebody in the head. And it did happen one time, and all the kids sure made fun of me. And it was the moment I got so scared to be picked on and made fun of, I decided I'm not going back to my home by riding the school bus. That was the first day of school because I'm so scared I'd rather walk home than riding the school bus home. Uh, my father was freaking out. He was waiting at the bus stop and the, the school driver opened the door, go open like this, and he saw one kid one coming off the bus, second kid come on the bus, third kid come on the bus. By the time he saw the fifth kid off the bus, he realized one thing, little hand wasn't on the bus. And so he got so nervous. It was like, I didn't lose hand in China, I lost him in America. So he was so freaking out. He called my principals in the school, make a big notion out of it. My school teacher, Miss Bo, had a, she had to get in her car and driving slowly back into from school to my house. She was hoping to catching me on the way I was walking home. But it wasn't until an hour and a half later that I got home. What a relief for my both parents. Wow, I didn't lose our son. That was an incredible moment. And I remember, I remember this was, this was the moment, the defining moment in my lifetime. I realized if I wanted anything in life, I do not have to care about my current circumstances 
what my teacher says, what、uh, other kids says in my world at the time, I have to take in charge of my life. I remember the walk, an hour and a half walk home. It was the toughest walk I ever did in my life, lifetime. I often say, "Hey, great God above and great divine above, why do you put me in these situations? Why is it when I'm going home I can't have my own peace, and when I come to school, all the kids are making fun of me? I know I'm bigger than this. I'm, I know I'm larger than this. What's the solutions?" And next thing I know, my tears just slowly falling down. One drop, second drop, third drop, and next thing I know, I was bawling, I was crying, I was crying my heart out because I didn't know what to do. I feel lost. I feel like there's no way in the world I can hide my problem. Just getting bigger and bigger. I was embarrassed. I was scared, and I was nobody. But then I realized the sadness has turned into anger. I was mad at the world, you know. Screw the world. Screw everybody around me. I don't care what you say. I don't care. I'm so freaking dirt poor right now. I'm gonna make something out of myself. That's when I have my 24-year plan. I say to myself, when I turn myself into 37 years old, I'm gonna be making bowl load of money. I'm gonna be a waking millionaire, so I can help tons of people achieve the same. That was my defining moment. That was my defining purpose. It doesn't matter what the circumstances is. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now. You need to figure out what is the best for you and for your life. What you want to do, and you need to find out what is your defining moment and what is your definite purpose.